Fine tuning with Google AI Studio has never been easier. I'm going to show you two methods to do some fine tuning of large language models. Um, it's going to be based off the Gemini Pro. And um, what we're going to do is ultimately walk you through the steps. Uh, but why would you want to do some fine tuning? Well, fine tuning models is really important for businesses to add context to large language models. It improves the accuracy and it also helps with credibility and sourcing of where those answers came from. Um, it also helps to create niche and um, product specific large language models. So you could expand this to um, very specific business cases or business use um, in, in different environments. So where would you use these fine tuned models? Well, it could be in a number of places like internal um, knowledge banks or external chat bots where you would normally have an agent or somebody talking to a person. Um, this is a fast way to um, answer some of those questions. And ultimately what you wanna do is get the reliability and the accuracy up. So let's get going. Right, so what we're gonna do is log into the AI google.dev, which is an environment which allows you to um, quickly prototype and build um, large language models. And um, it's a really simple interface. If you'd like a more advanced, um, more fine-tuned version, have a look at my other video um, for fine-tuning in Vertex AI. All right, so what we're gonna do is log into google.dev if you haven't already, um, and then click on the get API key. So what I'm going to do is show you two different ways of creating a fine-tuned model. Uh, both require um, a little bit of manual input. Um, the one we're going to use in um, Microsoft Lists or Excel is going to be a lot simpler and a lot easier, which you can pass around to your business users to get them to answer for you. Um, so the, the quickest way to get going with it is on the left-hand side, click on New Tuned Model. Um, and as you can see here, there's two different options that we can um, provide um, Google with to get a fine-tuned model. All right, it basically says here, recommend using 100 to 500 examples. Um, and if you click on the tuning guide, it's basically gonna bring up the tuning guide over here. All right, so um, we can tune the Gemini Pro models and it'll basically give you a rundown of how it works, what it looks like, and how to prepare the uh, information sets. Okay, so you can tune with as little as 20 examples, but obviously the more you have, the better the accuracy is going to be. So for this example, I'm just gonna do 20 or 30 um, examples just to get you going, um, and you'll see that the quality and the accuracy depends on the volumes. Um, so um, it is a bit of an exercise, it is a bit of work, but it will be well worth it for your um, context. All right, and um, what we can do now, and what, once the model's been fine-tuned, you can basically look at the graph and um, the way it's been tuned, and it will give you an accuracy um, model as well. All right, so uh, with that said, let's, let's, do the, let's try both um, approaches. So we're going to do the first approach now, which you'll see is quite manual. So let's go create a structured prompt. All right, um, so it's basically saying here um, input and your output. All right, so here's the input and what we want the output to be. All right, so user's input, so what is banking? All right, and the model's output is going to be banking is um, offering services to lenders and to provide financial options for business owners. All right, so this is obviously just a very generic, my version of what a bank actually is. And what we can do now is we can start um, typing the next one. So uh, what accounts do you have? All right, and we can then put in here, savings, term deposits, all right, so you see where I'm going with this, right? You're gonna to have to sort of um, fine tune it to what your particular output is and what your questions are that you've currently got. Um, so a common way to find that out would basically to go ask your frontline people, go look through your database, go look through uh, multiple um, areas where you can say, all right, what are the common questions? What are some of the things that um, are run of the mill that we can quite easily answer without somebody having to pick up a phone? All right, so there's two examples. All right, so this is now two examples of what we need to do. And what we can do, Stu, over here is to save the prompt here and just say uh, uh, tuning prompts. All right, um, and let's just call this bank underscore tuning prompts. 
All right, and we can click save. All right, now we need to add at least 20 more examples over here. And um, I'm not gonna do that right now because I'm gonna show you the next best method. All right, uh, so the next best way of doing it is let's go and do um, new tuned model. Let's pretend that you didn't want to use that method and you like that method for work for some reason. You can now just go over here and choose bank tuning models um, or tuning prompts and it'll give you a, a warning saying that there's too few examples. We only provided two examples so it needs a lot more. All right so here's what it's going to look like and here's the tuned models name. But what we're going to do now is do a slightly better uh, or slightly simpler way of doing it um, and let's open up um, Google Sheets, right? Because it looks to import from Google Sheets. So select a sheet or upload a file. So what I've done in the background is I've created a, a simple Google Sheets tab um, in docs.google.com. Just created a new Excel um, uh, file and just put an ID input and output and basically created the questions and the answers of what um, is typically asked for at um, certain institutions. All right, so a bank is just an example. Um, this over here is not um, uh, any specific bank in particular. It's just a example here. All right, so I've got how many? Uh, 28 examples. All right, so this is, um, this is good enough to just get you going with the actual fine tuning. All right, so let's click back onto fine tuning the model. All right, what we're gonna do is click on import. All right, it's gonna ask us where the uh, sheet is. And I've called it my bank queue. All right, let's click on that and hit insert. All right, so as you can see here, it's got a column labels, use the first row as headers and prefix the column names, okay? All right, so we don't really need to prefix anything. Um, we don't want to import this ID column um, because it's not necessary, but import, we want to import to the input column. All right, and outputs, we want to import to output column. All right, so it's basically a data mapping exercise over here. All right, and um, oh, let's just take that on for the time being. All right, and let's click on import 28 model or 28 um, examples. All right, let's call this um, a tuned model. Let's call this my bank QA. All right, and the description here is a sample QA model. All right, so let's choose the base model that we want to enhance. We basically can choose Gemini and any of the advanced settings that you would like over here. So these things over here, um, uh, you can leave as the defaults. And what we need, now need to do is click on tune. All right, so what it's gonna do is it's basically going to bring it up into my files and here you can see um, the my bank QA. It's in the queue, it's a tuned model type. And as you can see, the progress is currently being um, updated. All right, so you'll, you'll just wait here for a little while just to get that um, fine tuned model going. Okay, so once it's been done, it'll just say updated and um, it won't actually tell you that it's completed. But if you wanted to get rid of the, the model um, for whatever reason, just click on the ellipses and click on delete, but we won't do that right now. What we wanna do is let's give it a, let's go and have a look at it. All right, so click on the tuned model. And what it's gonna basically give you here is it's gonna give you the model ID so that you can call it from outside of your um, environment to basically test it. All right, and this over here is the um, the loss and epoch. So how much basically um, the predictive model is going to deviate after the training. All right, so for more information, you can have a look at the um, documentation over here. So you can see that um, our um, curve looks pretty much the same as that. And they recommend um, uh, you can change the epoch parameters uh, to get the same performance. All right, so if you've got a huge amount of data, um, you can start um, looking at the, um, the the fine tuning aspects over here. It's kind of out of the out it's outside the scope of this particular session, um, but yeah, have a look at um, learning about this if it interests you. What we're going to do now is ultimately uh, use the tuned model. So what we can do is go and. Um, uh, click on use in freeform prompt. 
All right, so what we want to do now is ultimately test it out. Okay, so we've opened up the model. So on the far right hand side over here, click on your model, make sure that you've selected uh, your uh, fine tune model. Um, I like to set the temperature down because it's um, quite factual. We wanted to use our large language model questions and answers. So let's go and have a look over here. Let's uh, let's take this one over here. So how do I withdraw money from my account? And it should come up with um, some answers around branches, ATMs, or by using a debit card. All right, um, so let's uh, grab that. And let's pop it in over here. Now let's just get rid of all this white space so it doesn't confuse it. All right, and all we do is click on the run. All right, so what it should do now is um, it should actually go and uh, look at our um, um, uh, tuned um, data and it can be made of branches, ATMs, or by using debit cards. All right, so let's have a look at what it's come up with. Your ATMs, bank branches, other ATMs, mobile banking and point of sale withdrawal. So, so those are all correct. Um, it's obviously added in one or two extra things. So you can now basically start uh, fine tuning this prompt a little bit more uh, to make sure that it uh, gives you the right answers. So again, the more uh, information you have in here, so you can now probably start adding um, ATMs, um, other bank, um, let's just go ATMs and we can start adding in uh, branches. All right, so as you can see, what I'm doing here is basically building up the set to ultimately fine tune it even more. So um, this is part of the process of testing it, learning from it, and ultimately seeing what the accuracy looks like. Right, so if you enjoyed this, um, like, subscribe, and let me know what you're building out in your fine-tuned models. All right, so um, what we can do now is just ultimately save this as um, my test tuning um, all right and we can click on save all right so um, a common question that I get is all right how do I actually get this and use this large language model in my environment all right well what you're gonna do is click on the get code all right and depending on what software and what um, um, uh, process you're using I click on Python and um, open up your um, Python package uh, so you can basically just copy all this code and um, create a little Python program. Um, so we can open up Visual Studio over here. All right, um, what it's gonna ask you for is your API key. So go grab your API key from um, the AI Studio. So get the API key, click on your API key, copy it. And um, what you can do is come back into your um, Python Pro or into your um, development environment, whichever one you use. All right, and um, what we can do is click on save. So to run this code, what you can do is um, hit the terminal button over here and just click on new terminal uh, because it's saying here we need to install the Google Generative AI um, packages. So let's just copy that and let's pop it in at the bottom over here. You can see that the terminal is going to now execute um, all of the requirements. Um, as you can see, I've already got all these requirements satisfied. I've popped in my API key and ultimately what we can do now is run this particular program. So you just click on run and you can just say start without debugging and um, it'll ultimately run. So if you enjoy this video, like, subscribe, and um, if you'd like to get more information on how to do any of the other fine tuning, um, let me know in the comments. Thank you for watching.